So my name is Sarah Hotchkiss, and I've been actually weaving, loom weaving since 1971, basically. Uh, I started my, um, my love of textiles when I was about five, and I was, it was before, actually before kindergarten, and my mother um, taught me how to knit little sweaters for my dolls and uh, sew doll clothes for them because they had to have really great clothes. So I, I had a great time doing that. I just loved it. I remember one time when I was little, when I was maybe eight or nine or ten, my mother and my aunt and I, I my mother, my aunt, and my grandmother um, on my father's side of the family went to um, visit a friend of my aunt's and also to go to a wildflower farm in northwestern Connecticut. And we went to visit my aunt's friend who had all these looms in her garage. And, and she had all these things. She was weaving uh, like rugs out of denim fabric. And I, I was totally smitten um, with the looms, you know, just the physical sort of aspect of them and, you know, that they worked and somebody could figure out how to use them. <laughs> And all that. So I, I just, it was just those little sort of benchmarks along the way that kind of eventually um, led me to, to weaving all the time. I, um, I took my first college course in 1971, and I just kept on going with weaving ever since. I set up my first studio in 74, and I've just basically been weaving ever since. So these two looms, these two big ones, these are Swedish rug looms. They were made in Sweden. They are not made anymore. Um, Sweden for many years had this really fabulous tradition of um, weaving rugs for churches and public spaces and people's houses and, and also um, big wall tapestries. I mean, it was a real tradition in Sweden, it's, and it's kind of died out to some extent, not totally, but too much. Um, and, and these looms were purchased by people in the United States, and then I bought them used from them. Um, but the company that makes these looms doesn't make these looms anymore. Mm. They, they make a loom that's five feet wide, and that's the largest loom they make, yeah. which says something about that whole industry. Just, they're big and they're massive, and, and you need that because when you're weaving rugs, they're under a lot of tension. You have to have the rug on, you have to have the, this is the warp right here, mm -hmm. these threads that are hooked onto the loom, and those threads have to be under a lot of tension in order to get the patterns in here and the weaving really tight, because it's a rug you want it to be really tight. Yeah. Um, so you need this mass and you need the strength of the loom. But it's also about balance. The looms are just really, really, really well balanced. And this rug here is a tapestry technique because it's got these shapes. And the way you get shapes is with a tapestry technique that um, it's, it's tapestry is really like a discontinuous weft. The, th the fabric I'm using is the weft. And I'm moving, on each row, I'm either moving a set of fa a section of fabric either to the right or to the left. So many threads. And that makes the pattern I'm hearing. Um, also, since this is a special order, I, um, I cut pieces of the fabric that I'm going to use in the rug, and I lay it out on, the, on this little uh, color swatch board so that the person who's getting the rug knows what color it's going to be. Mm -hmm. These uh, funny-looking torture things are called temples. And they keep my warp out straight. Okay, I have to beat the beater because I gotta bring the uh, row forward. Well, um, I am we I'm weaving the weft, and I'm weaving with fabric. The fabric is the weft, and what I've done is I've pressed down on the treadles down below, and I'm I'm going to do that again. And, and what those treadles do is they make some of the threads come up and some of the threads go down.
and now I'm going to beat with the beater. But see how these, the warp threads have kind of meshed. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that made the row. So now I beat it down. Put that arm back. Now I did two rows. Looming is wow. also very physical. Yes, yeah. It's a lot of leg work and a lot of arms. Yeah, How do you know that that fabric is going to come out in that color when it's all kind of crimped together? Experience. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, so I have an idea of... Basically, my, I work with warps that are colored, because I, I love the, the interaction between the warp threads and the fabric pieces. and so. Ahead of time, when I'm designing this, I have an idea of how those two, uh, the warp and the weft, are going to interact. These are a bound edge where I um, knot the edge all the way across and then I cut a piece of bound edge fabric and sew one edge on the sewing machine, fold it over and then sew it by hand with little teeny stitches on the other side. Wow.